Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Now, as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, let's head on out to the Temple of the Good Hunt to see whatever is there. There, apparently. Nah. I think I'll stand up so if you hear the desk in the background, it's just me engaging the engine. I'm amused that the skeletal marksman is encumbered. And then again, he doesn't have much strength, does he? Ten. Although, our entire party has enough currently. This looks like a temple to Erastil. I'll go ahead. It's a large map section for basically nothing. Okay, nothing here. Let's pop on inside then. Although this is uh, an interesting uh, thumbnail uh, possibility here. Oh, Kiado. Yeah, this is definitely a temple of Erastil. This is my kind of work. I'm begging you, don't go in there. The young cleric lets out a loud scream and addresses you in a quavering voice. I, I, I beg you, d d don't touch that door. Remind me, uh, first of all, I need the services of a cleric. I'll be glad to help, Commander. I have kept all of Rathamus' scrolls, and I've even managed to learn a few of his tricks. I study languages so that I can read foreign scrolls. Rathamus used to call me, call me a polyglotton. I never met a foreign language I didn't want to sink my teeth into. The young man seems to preen slightly. Does he have the ring? No, so that is an earlier version of the game you could get multiple copies of the Ring of the Salamander. They've uh, probably patched it out. That said, I think we will uh, see here. No, he doesn't really have any of the uh, relevant components that I'm looking for. He does have plenty of scrolls though, but those are also irrelevant. Nope. Dinosaur bones, I would like that. 106,000. No. Let's get 500 of those. Nope. Okay. What an honor it is to see you again, Commander. Welcome to the Temple of Delamere the Blessed. As the Temple's Prior, I offer my greetings. At the word Prior, the priest's face flushes pink. Remind me, who are you? They call me Kiado, the Shepherd Boy. Well, that's what they used to call me, but it's not very fitting for a priest, is it? The cleric lapses into confused silence for a few moments. I come from a village near Last Wall. I've always been drawn to Erastil, even as a child. 
A cleric by the name of Jod once passed through our village. A kind old man. Another reference to Kingmaker. <clears throat> he looked me in the eye, a silly little kid, and he said, I see you're going to serve Rastil just like myself. And so I did. When I heard about your crusade, I set out to join it, just like my heart was telling me to do. At first, I served as a novice under the venerable Rathimus, but now he's gone and I've been left on my own. Rathimus and I marched on Dresden with your forces. We fought in your host. And then, when demons, when the demons were driven out, I came here. This temple is centuries old. Erastus' worshippers would have come here in their hundreds in the past. But even now, we get the old pilgrim wandering in. That's why I wanted to take over this temple. Someone ought to take care of this sacred place. I want to know more about this temple and everything connected to it. Where to begin? This temple is dedicated to Delamere. Oh, I mean, of course, it is a temple of Erastil, but Delamere was the prior of this temple. I mean, no, I am the prior of this temple, and she is like its blessed mother superior, its patroness. Mm. The young man falls into a confused silence and looks pleadingly at you. What is it like to be a prior? Oh, it's terrifying. I live here alone, you see. People travel a great distance to come here, but I have been given an important task. Here in the World Wound, these temples are needed more than ever, so that people don't lose their faith. But that doesn't stop my legs shaking in terror. When I think of my teacher Rathimus, rest his soul, I just feel like running away. I swear I would have run long ago, but one thing keeps me here. Erastil would not have granted me these spells for no reason, and I cannot let him down. Or the people, I can't let them down either. You say you're a coward, but you're in no hurry to leave this place, even though nobody's keeping you here. I know from experience how scary it is to be alone, surrounded by strangers. You're not as weak as you think you are. You're stronger than most. Don't worry, we will destroy the demons, every last one of them. We have faith in you, Commander. You'll show them who's the biggest turnip in, the f in this field. Tell me about Delamere. She lived in these parts back when Sarkoris was still standing. She was a priestess of Erastil, and the Kelids deeply respected her for her hard nature and her unshakable faith. Erastil blessed her with various wonders, and the common folk knew, what, knew that she would stand up for them. Delamere did not like city life. She said cities encouraged vile deeds and corruption of the soul. She said that people ought to live in small clans where everyone knows everyone, where everyone is kin, and where every person has a duty to the rest. You can't hide your sins in a village. In a village, everyone knows what kind of person you are. She had a revelation, and she would travel around the villages and see how many people lived there. If any settlement had more than 53 souls, she drove out all the rest and told them to settle elsewhere, because otherwise the villages would have grown and turned into little towns. Her methods were harsh, of course, but people still listened to her because Erastil himself was on her side. She had an edge to her. She single-handedly chased off whole bands of marauders that harassed villagers. And after she died, this temple was built in her honour, in the place where Erastil gifted her with his relics. They say it was here that a white stag emerged from the forest and spoke to her in a human voice, telling her that she should hunt it, because it was the will of her lord. Delamere tracked that stag for three days and three nights through the forests, and when she ran it to the ground, she made its antlers into a bow and its hide into armour. And that bow never misses, and Erastil himself blessed that armour so that it repels the strikes of enemies. So she's buried here, is what you're saying? It's gotta be a crypt or something like that, right? Could there be any valuables lying around in there, do you think? Uh, what? Valuables? The young man's voice hardens all of a sudden. There are no valuables in here, and you had better stop thinking what you were thinking just now. I do not share her views, but I respect her faith. Even I think that she was a hard woman. Can it truly be wrong for more than 53 people to live in one place, and if there are 54, does the moral decay and treachery begin immediately? 
Tiado catches himself and turns red. But that is my f foolishness and ignorance talking. The wisdom of Erastil was revealed to Delmer, so she must have understood the unique mysteries underpinning the world. I want to know more about Erastil's teachings. Erastil is an old god back from the times when there were no such things as towns. Simple he is and good, and he wants people to be the same. He wants them to live in small settlements where everyone knows each other. He wants them to value the simple joys of life and not vacuous pondering. He wants people to earn their bread honestly through hunting, crafts, farming and fishing. He especially prizes hunting, of course, when it is for sustenance rather than sport. He is both stag and hunter. He favours both guises. Arastel does not like finery and he demands no special ceremonies. He used to simply appear before hunters and rangers and offer his wisdom. But when he is angered, he is terrifying. If someone harms the country folk, takes pleasure in hurting animals or spoils the crops, and that person may well take an arrow from Erastil, and his bow knows no mercy. It is the father of all bows, for it was Erastil who taught people how to shoot. Everything is clear. It was my pleasure to be of service, Commander. Have you seen anything suspicious in the area? The cleric swallows nervously and lowers his gaze. No, everything's quiet around here. There's nothing going on in this temple, that's for sure. Pilgrims have said there's a d dragon flying around this area, snatching up travelers, and uh, others say that it's just a rumor. Things are quiet here in my temple. Have you heard about my new powers? Kiado stares fearfully back at you. Yes, I have heard. It is a dark deed disturbing the dead. Nothing good can come of it. If anybody else had started openly using death magic, I would have immediately accused them of treachery. But it's you, Commander. The young man gives you a trusting smile. I guess dark times truly are upon us if the best of the Crusaders has had to resort to the most heinous of weapons. But the demons must be defeated somehow. There's one thing I can't understand. People say that Iomede gave you this gift, but that simply cannot be. She is a goddess, yes, but she has her taboos. Iomede would never bestow such powers on her priest. Does that mean that some other god has interceded for you and given you this power? I wonder who it could be. I discovered a concealed door in the temple. Where does it lead? Kiado's face goes grey and he falters and stutters over his words. What, 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 what do door? Uh, uh, the, the, the door. It, it leads into the, 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 the cellar. There's n n nothing interesting behind that, that, that door. Sweat breaks out on the cleric's forehead as he looks at you with pleading eyes. You're a terrible liar. Speak the truth before I lose my temper. Kiado looks to be on the verge of tears. It's all Sanedra. She's a witch. She, she came here one night and threatened to torture me and demanded that I let her into the crypt. She said that her friends would be coming here sometimes and then she placed a curse on me. If I allow anyone other than the initiated servants of Baphomet into the crypt without her permission, a brood of rats will appear in my stomach and they will gnaw me from the inside out. I want to live. I'm no warrior. A humble shepherd, and I never said a word to anyone. They go in there and do things. They whisper. I'm afraid to go in, and you can't go in. There's no one in there now anyway, and Zanedra hasn't been here for many days. And Rastel willing, she, she won't come again, a cursed witch. I don't know who this Zanedra is, but I'd really like to get my hands on her and uh, have a chat. Or maybe I'd just reach for my weapon right away. It speaks a language all of its own. But a quick death is too good for cultist scum like her, after all the fear and torment and pain they put people through. After this furious outburst, Sila calms down and calms down again and speaks to Kiado. Stay strong, kid. You're not alone. You have allies. And your faith. I want to go inside the crypt. The cleric's resistance is hanging by a thread. His lips are trembling and his voice drops to a whisper. I have the key, but what right do you have to... 
As the commander of the crusade, I order you to give me the key. Tiado guiltily hangs his head like a criminal caught in the act. With a trembling hand, he gives you the key. The final words sound unexpectedly clear and crisp. Don't. Don't go in there. But of course we will. I'm here. Where else would I be? Why is there a trap in your temple? Pretty good, aren't I? Diado? This is my kind of work. Ultimate predator. Hmm. We can use that. I think Peps already has. Yeah, we can give that to uh, Etab. Then we have some more potion stuff here, some ingredients. This is my kind of work. Hmm. I'll read that read that from the inventory. Specimen three six seven. Finian Dismar. Test report one. Master, the first stage of the testing process was a success. Specimen 367 Finian Dismar turned into a sword on command. The sword possesses sufficient sharpness and the ability to adjust the wielder's strike. It beheaded a crusader with a single blow. A clean cut, the blade is undamaged. Additional notes, the specimen makes unwanted noises resembling weeping. No reaction to threats. Another trap. Pretty good, aren't I? Yes, yes, follow my life. This is my kind of work. Belt of dexterity, nice. And Elven notes. That's for the storyteller. As it should be. I think we'll show this guy some interesting mercy. For your treachery, I sentence you to death. The young man throws a desperate glance toward the door and then raises his fists like a country bruiser. You, you better not touch me, Mister. I'll fight you. Yep. Just as a little side note here, if I hadn't done this, he would have exploded into a swarm of rats when we come back up. Out of my sight. So this is the merciful thing to do to him. Sadly. And now we go down here. That is not far. The bloody remains of a person lie out in plain view. There are some marks on the bones left by gnawing teeth. Some of them human. Diary found in a crypt. Let you guys read that if you want to. Apparently a Lamashtu worshipper. Which would be interesting that they have a temple of Lamashtu underneath of Arastin. Glory be to Baphomet, lord of the ivory labyrinth and bridled consort of Lamashtu, father of the horned brood. Connive, maul, rut and build labyrinths of lies in his honour. This is the will of his chosen priestess Zanedra. An antler of monstrous proportions set in steel. The beast to which it belonged must have been as large as a house. 
Profane depiction of a bull's head drawn in blood. Okay, there's nothing I'll else here. Ahead. Now I need to actually want to make a hard save here. Burial rites fulfill several functions. They mitigate the psychological strain of parting with the deceased. They neutralize a source of disease-causing miasmas, and they suppress the spread of cannibalistic and necrophiliac acts in society at large. There are many ways of disposing a corpse. Burning, dissolution in harsh chemicals, ingestion by all members of the community. But by far the most popular method is burial. A grave protects the corpse against carrion eaters, serves as a place of remembrance, proclaims the merits of the deceased, and of especial importance, when all safety measures are taken, grave burial prevents the deceased from coming back and visiting their still living relatives. The commander examines the stone sarcophagus resting in the crypt of the Temple of Erastil. It was used as a feasting table for demons until very recently. Bones are scattered across the stone top of the sarcophagus. Some are easily identifiable as human finger bones. A human eyeball floats unappetizingly in a clay bowl, and next to it lies a half gnawed rib cage. The commander decides that it is worth examining the sarcophagus. Bones are scattered across the stone top of the sarcophagus. Some are easily identifiable as human finger bones, and so forth. The sarcophagus is constructed from large stone slabs, crudely hewn but fitted together with skill. Each slab is so heavy that it is impossible to reach the contents of the sarcophagus. This was likely the intention of its creators. In some places, the stone is covered with intricate curling lines of symbol. The commander decides to examine the symbols on the sarcophagus. At first, the symbols are unfamiliar to the commander, but his eyes soon land on a familiar combination of letters. De la Mer. This is the name the cleric Chiado mentioned in his conversation with the commander. This sarcophagus undoubtedly contains the body of a priestess of Erastil, De la Mer the Blessed. It is unlikely that the young cleric could have read this inscription, written as it is in such an ancient tongue. However, the information Chiado provided is enough to help the commander unravel the mystery. On the lid of the sarcophagus, the symbols form a circle. The commander notices that the seemingly solid slab is actually composed of several pieces in this spot. The hairline joints between the fragments are almost impossible to see. In Sarkoris, there existed a funeral tradition in which the priests would place magic seals such as this on tombs. The symbols on the seal are threatening. I guard the eternal sleep of Delamere. Cursed be any who dare to destroy me. The commander... ...says that the seal can probably be pried off with a knife and disassembled. Caledon digs the tip of a knife in the join between the seal's fragments he carefully nudges the blade until the seal clicks and crumbles to pieces and the lid of the sarcophagus slides open. Inside the sarcophagus lie the remain of a female archer. The bones are held together by leather armor covered in the same symbols as those on the sarcophagus and the skeleton's hands are clutching an impressive bow made from an antler. Surprisingly, there is no unpleasant smell from the remains. The commander breathes life into the old bones and summons them into his service. Little green flames spark to life inside the empty eye sockets of the once blessed Delamere. With a crunching sound, the fingers of bone clench around the bow. Her body slowly rises from its sarcophagus and takes in the crypt with a hate filled glance. Gaping jaw emerges a grasp of vexation. Who has dared? The dead priestess glares at you green flames raging in her empty eye sockets. What have you done to me? How dare you desecrate my remains? With each word, air from her lungs whooshes out between her ribs. I understand that war demands extreme measures, but plundering sacred tombs? 
We should not do this out of respect for the dead and ourselves. Be quiet. I have a stellar idea. How about we shove her back in the tomb and just act like we was never here? She's creepy as all hell. Your temple has been defiled and your priest revealed to be a traitor. Delamere draws a breath like she's sniffing the air. My country. Push with corruption. Demons. Cities. They defile the soul. I was right. This cleric is nothing. Bow before me, Delamere. Delamere's proud back slowly curves into a bow and through gritted teeth she hisses. Yes, master. I want to know more about you. The dead priestess sears you with her gaze. Can it be that my glory has faded? And you do not know of Delamere the Blessed? Priestess of Erastil who carries his bow which always flies true? Or do you mock me? They say you were a great priestess. Is that true? I served Erastil faithfully. I carried out his will. I fought against the filth of cities, human hives. All should not live like that. No one should. Corruption seeps from the cities. I was the protector of villages. I guarded them against marauders, against city swindlers, against internal strife, against too many people. I was known, feared, respected, loved. Tell me about your armor and bow. Pride suffuses Delamere's voice. They are the gifts of Rastil. He sent his spirit to me, a white stag. Three days we vied with each other in stealth and speed. A noble fight. I did not eat the meat, but instead I offered it up to Rastil. And from the antlers and hide, I made a bow and a breastplate. They saved me from brigands many times, and there were peasants who were not in favour of me. They ambushed me on my travels, but their knives could not penetrate my armour. But my arrows pierced them clean through. How do you feel in your new? The priestess's voice trembles with rage. This is an abomination. A betrayal by Erastil. He has forsaken me. I can feel my own rot. I feel the corruption in myself. I would kill myself now, but Erastil abhors suicide, and your will has bound me like a chain. I don't have any more questions. Delamere snorts haughtily and tries to offer a harsh retort, but the words stick in her throat, turning into a harsh rasp. I have a task for you. I will obey, master, though being your slave is a torment. I'll think of a use for you later. I am not your dog. Carrying out your orders, the humiliation. Stay here for now. The dead priestess nods silently, but her demeanor leaves you in no doubt of her hatred for Get her as a companion. I know the way. Not the best companion, probably not one I'll have in my party. But uh, nevertheless, oh, I forgot to buff. We should I... prepare. I should buff. No mistakes. A bright future awaits us. <sighs> Don't mind me. Doubt is the heart's greatest challenge. Let us bide our time. I welcome your company. No reason to pause.
I don't think you have any other per level, one minute per level. You have those, but those are more for extremely Act difficult nicely. fights. Hmm? Our duty calls. Oh, the waiting's never fun. Stone skin. <laughs> I'm not sure if the uh, demon thing pop up now or if it pops up later, but I'd rather be prepared just in case. It seems to be later. Leaving. Go. Let's go to the Ashen Grotto. Maybe the skeletal salesman, finally. No. That is most definitely not the skeletal salesman. <coughs> um, the issue with this thing is that it does breath weapon. I would very much like to uh, spread the party out. The light take you. Yeah, that hurts. to have them running away because they are scared senselessly, understandably enough. Sila doesn't care. I don't think that's going to affect the dragon very much. Does this thing have damage reduction? Yes, it does. Attack! Uh, let's just continue to use example. <laughs> Won't you just accept your fate and become my dinner? I'll eat you soon enough. Ow. Oh, skip the pleasantries. Together, we stand. I encourage people to save the poor, helpless tieflings around the world. Starting with me. 
Smile, the world's not ending just yet. Uh, do you have any harm spells? No, do we have any harm scrolls? I'm pretty sure we do. Inflict critical wounds. That seems like a promising scroll for the task here. Excellent. Mm. Graber might be annoyed that we have uh, had an encounter with the dragon without him. I have a mild suspicion that this Ashen Grotto might be the dragon. Grimwood Forest. I haven't got the foggiest where the Grimwood Forest is, but I seem to remember that the dragon things were around this area here. Can I please just select this? I have no idea. Grimwood, there it is. Stop. And I think we have to fight that demon army. Oh dear. We've got two actions on the headlights, that is. We'll leave her here. Okay, I think we can enter the Ashen Grotto, but people are fatigued. How annoying. Oh, whatever. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let's save some adventures for later. Okay, I remember this place. Um, what I will do is... Uh, can I set up camp here somewhere? Somehow I doubt it. and I don't think we can get out. Okay, so I have to leave the area. And we have to go back here in, um, in the next episode. Um... But I know that if we go in here, the episode is going to end up at 55 to 60 minutes, and uh, that is too much. So um, let's wrap things up here. Now, if you do have any questions and or comments, as per usual, of course, leave those in the comment section below. And I hope that you enjoy the episode and join me in the next one as well.